Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Cinema and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Dwellings of Elder Whale. We are taking a look at this small box that can neatly fit in the frame with us both at the same time. This is a new big game from Kickstarter. It is designed by Luke Laurie and published by Breaking Games. It plays from one to five players in about 30 minutes per player. Mm, so Dwellings of Elder Whale. in this game which is a strange hero game, we're going to talk more about that later. In this game, which is basically a worker placement game, you are going to also assign place your workers out on this board right here. This is just a mock board set up now for uh, an example. You are people, different factions, going into Elder Whale and trying to be the new emperor of Elder Whale, the theme we love the most. Going yes. in, and but there's no other general we're trying to like impress or something. No, we're just basically going to try to take this place by power and be the best player that can basically be the emperor of Andrew Elder Whale at the end of the game. I don't remember if it's called emperor, but yeah, let's, let's go with that. Yeah. So what you're going to do in this game very briefly is that you're going to place your workers out on the map. You will be able to place them on different elemental tiles which gives you resources which you can take from these uh, resource tiles. They will also be able to go on these ruin spaces and it gives you a uh, possible to do different actions like recruiting more people, getting different magic cards in your hand, making dwellings like this or going to the dungeon to um, see more of the uh, map and also buy some of these cards which is basically making your engine works better. You will do that and then either when you don't have any more workers or when you want to, you will recall your workers, get your workers back, and then you will do some other actions. Then you can then do actions on the cards you have for all the workers you take in, which are not in the underworld, which are people that are getting killed throughout the game. Um, that is basically what you're going to do. You're going to go to the map. Uh, monsters will come and attack you. You can attack other players. Players can attack you. And you're trying to be the player with the most points at the end of the game. Many points you get throughout the game by building dwellings and doing some other things, but most of the game points you will get at the end of the game by basically focusing on some of these elements. Mm. Because if you are, let's say, on this fire element, let's say I'm all the way up here at a five point spot, that means I'm first of all going to get five points. And then I'm going to get five more points for each dwelling I had in a fire element space. And I'm also going to get five more points for each card I had with a fire element. And there is, that's where most of the points of the game is coming from at the end. Mm. And some of the cards you have in your hand can give you points throughout the game. And also at the end of the game, some of them can give you points. And that is basically like the short overview to make some of this review make sense if you haven't played or seen anything about the game. I also did an unboxing of the game. If you want to see more of the components, you can go check that up up here. So let's talk about the artwork and components for Dwelling So Elder Way. First off, I think these miniatures look awesome. Mm. And I love that they actually given them some color, yes. though that they're very simple colored. I like that. It's a bit of a table hog on the oh, table. Yes. It takes a lot of space, especially the map in the beginning starts off very small, mm -hmm. but then you reveal more and more tiles as we go and it takes a lot of space. And uh, also you need more of these trays when we are more players playing with different elements in play. Yeah. Most like, of the time you have two of them. Yes. I like this little thingy uh -huh. that you, when you place a, a dwelling, mm -hmm. a little house, you turn one of your workers into a dwelling. I like that component a lot. This game trace, I'm very fond of them. Yes. Except one thing. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to have your resources down here, mm -hmm. but the walls are very high. Yeah. So when you're sitting across uh, the table from me, I can't see what resources you have. No, I have no idea. Like nope. it, it just, just doesn't work. And that is a setback because I want to see what you're planning to do mm -hmm. so that I can uh, race you for it or mm. decide to just do something else actually so all in all i think it's good but this i'm not very fond of no and then um, and, and as i said the, the, the miniatures looks very good yes. they have shade so like every, all of them are shaded i think yeah. it's cool and the artwork is very good i like the artwork on the tiles and i love the artwork on the different faction tiles. yeah there is eight of these right so there's 16 different factions with and different artwork like yeah, so 16 different factions. Very, very nice artwork there. Makes sense with the element they are. And one thing I will say, like, this is one of those games that when I saw it on Kickstarter, it looked kind of weird. Like, the 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 the, the, the artwork didn't look like it fitted with the things. The, the miniatures looked strange. Like, everything hmm. looked like it didn't work together. But when I see it on the table, 
it looks very good and the artwork on all the tiles looks good and uh, i i really feel like the artwork here is very very nice as i say it's a table hog it mm -hmm. takes a lot of space you need two of these you need four of these in a four player yeah. game two of these this board and then this is going to be pretty big when you play four players so you need a big board and playing five players i don't even know where to begin but it's very easy to set up oh, with yes. this it's just yeah. putting it on a table yeah. lifting the lids up and you're basically good to go i really like that i love that and also the fact that uh, you don't use all the elements in each game so uh, some of these let's say in this example we have used the fire element and the wind element so these two, the water and the forest, is just not in the game. Mm. So you just don't flip any cards. Yes. So now I can see, okay, these are available and the others are not. And also the fact that then when you when you put away the game, you can basically set it up for next time. Which yeah. is you spend like maybe two minutes more by taking all of these, shuffling them and placing three in each. Yeah, because every time you place a new tile, so let's see, this one was revealed. I just grab this and I put it here yeah. and I flip one over. And then that is You're set up. Go, yeah. So that is very, very nice. And I like that. Then I can set up the game the last time I played it. So that when next time it is basically, as I said, take off the trays and begin. So I enjoy that they have game trays in here. And all in all, the, the, the silk screen the, of the workers. I think some of this is uh, Kickstarter exclusive. But I think the game trays also is in the retail version of the game. So, uh, so for me, components is very high on this one. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Awesome. So we have played two, three, and four players, and uh, the, the box has a half an hour per player. And we have now spent about two hours with all player counts. Mm. Uh, two player first time, how long did we take? <laughs> two and a half hours. Yes. Yeah, uh, just figuring out how you're so even supposed to do things in this game was mm. a little hard the first time. So the rule book here, I think, is, is, is before we talk more about the player count, I think the rule book is good. You haven't read it, so I don't know why I'm like uh. saying talking to you. But but uh, did you feel like? But the first time, the second time you learned the game, like basically when I had t taught the game once, yes. it, it, it's not that hard to rem understand the game. Mm. Like it's not that complicated. I feel like a couple of things in the rules, but not really well explained. Like for example, some of the abilities of the monsters. Uh, have a link symbol which means that if somebody owns them they have that ability it wasn't very well uh, explained if that ability was only there if somebody owned them or if it was there mm. anyways which it was so i had to also design her about that so some things could have been better in the rule book but all in all i felt like the rule book was easy to learn and most games like this it has a lot of involved things the first time i teach it, it's kind of a ramble a kind of and then from the second time i have like a plan on how to teach mm. it so uh, what did you feel about the player counts? Like did you enjoy one more than the other or was like some games are good at two, good at three, good at four. How did you feel with this? Now this is a high interaction game. Yes. So this I feel is absolutely best with four players for mm -hmm. me. Uh, two players is also okay because you have fewer elements yeah. With, yeah. Uh, with you when you play. So it's automatically like walled a little bit mm -hmm. it gets a little bit tighter so it feels balanced but it's more interesting with four mm -hmm. and also with three players you can kind of get these two people fighting over the same time the same things yep. and one player just like boop -de -boo in the background having an easy time that was me yeah <laughs> and that is always good i agree like i think two and four was best mm. because of what you just said so i basically i agree on that mm. So let's talk a bit about the gameplay because the, the player count is, is fair and well. We I, I didn't think that two hours was too long. I felt like yeah, we can talk more about what you thought about the game later. But I felt like two hours went pretty quickly. I, I thought maybe like when, when if you play more, it will go quicker. I think easily you can get it down to an hour, hour 20 minutes with two players, an hour and 40 minutes with three players, depending on the players, of course, and, and, and how you play. And depending on how like uh, how much you rush to the end of the game yes because the game has a, a mechanism where basically it ends if somebody plays their sixth dwelling and also it ends if all of the tiles are out and that's mm. not going to be like that's when you get cards which is something that gets a lot of points and you also go to the end of the game so you're not going to be able to do that very many times you're trying to mm, Try to, to time when you do it mm. uh, so that you can get the most cards which gives you abilities and points and also the fact that you end the game so you try not to do it before somebody else ends the game so that timing is interesting yeah so the things that end you uh, end the game is also the things that wins you the game yes. uh, so it feels kind of like a race mm -hmm. to do the most stuff and also end the game before 
others can do the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's an optimization, basically. Yes. So I feel like the two hours that we've used have mm -hmm. flown by pretty quickly. Absolutely. Let's talk gameplay. So Dwellings of Elder World is a worker placement game. Absolutely. And we played uh, another game from Luke Laurie before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also a worker placement game. Yes. That is Manhattan Project uh, Energy Empire. Mm -hmm. And what he does is that you place these workers like this for example and then i have no workers left and then i have to take them in mm -hmm. and here's uh, he's done a little bit an, a twist on that yeah so when also when you take them in you do it in the order that you want one by one mm -hmm. and you have these actions on your in Parts, your play yeah. area so i can put one worker there to get one resource and more if i have upgraded the card mm -hmm. I can put it here to build some dwellings. Then I also have a I have to have an available dude to do that. And also I can recruit more guys. Mm -hmm. So you can do this on the board as well. Mm -hmm. But it feels like a double work placement, kind of. Yeah, I enjoy how like he evolved the uh, the mechanism he had in, in Energy Empire because yes. there it feels like you set them out and you basically reset mm. and you've been the begin again. Here it's, as you say, it's a double work placement. Mm. And one thing that makes it very interesting is that it might be strategies or it might be a combination of cards which make it better to do the reset than to do the set out action. So you don't want to set out all your actions because you want to do them, but you also want to have enough workers to be able to do all the actions you want to do. Yeah. So it's interesting, it's not that you always want to place everything because those actions are good and you reset with it bad. You reset in air quotes can be even better than the actual placement, which is something I, I, I really yeah, enjoy. Yeah, and I once played with a faction that uh, I never got to reset uh -huh. at all. Um, which brings us to the next point, that you have these special player powers. Yes, so the thing is that you have actually kind of like a double layer of variable player powers. Like you have variable player powers and you have variable worker powers. Which is something I really enjoy. Like I, I, I love it when you have like a worker placement game where you can have workers with different different kind of abilities and i'm gonna refer to a game i don't really love but like with the with the tuscany mm. expansion i love it there that you can get uh, different workers which have different abilities also in energy empire which mm. was uh, luke loris uh, other game that we really enjoyed so here you have the the normal uh, workers you also have the warrior you have the wizard and you have the dragon and those have their own base abilities they have a different amount of uh, dice they will roll in battle they have their different uh, rules for placing on the map uh, and that is like the basic differentiations. And then you have 16 different factions mm. where all of them have different abilities. Like two, two of the workers will have an ability for each faction, which will then change up how you will play that faction. I also like the fact that you have to basically balance out how many workers you get. And also the fact like the, the other workers, the wizard, the, 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 the dragon and the, the warrior are good. But you can't only have them because you need to get the dwellings because the dwellings will give you points and the dwellings also will get you the ability to score the cards so you cannot go for a heavy card strategy without getting dwellings because mm. for each dwelling you can score three cards so i ended up actually in the last time we played with two fewer dwellings in the four yeah. player game so i had more cards than i could score which lost me lots of points mm. so basically if you don't have enough of these normal workers you can't get the dwellings because you need them to make into dwellings and that is also a very interesting a uh, balancing mechanism i think mm. so i like like i like i really like the worker placement elements here oh, both yeah, the placement and the, the taking back mm. and i really like the the uh, the balancing, like, do I want a special ability dude? Do I want the dragon because he's good in battles? Do, do I, I want... even want to make the dwelling now? So mm -hmm. I have so few people left? Yes. That is also interesting. So I love that fact. Yeah. And also all of that adds to the variability of the game. Yes, I think that there are, is a lot of player powers to choose from that, yeah, lets you have a little bit a different player mm -hmm. playing style with each green game, but also based on... I now have an air element mm -hmm. person, then we have the air element tiles and the air elemental monster. Yeah. And these monster has special ways of acting as well, mm -hmm. so that also adds to the variability. I will say the variability there is high then, mm. because even though these aren't super different, like all of them are like, oh, now I'm gonna play extremely different, but it will can change your strategy quite a lot if you decide to play with your strategy or with your board. And you can also get some cards here because these are randomized, uh -huh. except for the first card that is a little simple and mm -hmm. uh, cheap to buy. That also you can give you some uh, extra action or mm. special power that you can use. Absolutely. So there's, I, I feel like the you can play this 
let's say you play it 16 times, one win each faction, mm. and each of those will feel different, both because mm. of the monsters, because of the cards, because of that. So you can play it quite a few times before you will feel like it's the same, even though like most games with high interaction, mm. I feel like also have a lot of uh, player uh, or a lot of replayability because of the fact that the game changes up depending on the other players as well. Yes. Like games which are more multiplayer solitaire are often less uh, variable, less uh, has less replayability because of those, those factors as well. We love multiplayer solitaire games, so it's not yeah. because of that, but, but that is one thing that I also think about like it, it makes it more viable it makes it dif more different because of the other players yes absolutely i feel like uh, going into like the the interaction of the game uh -huh. makes it a little different from the other games that we play yes it's a very uh, different euro game because this is a euro game it's a worker placement game but it feels very different because mm. of a couple of things it's a euro game where you fight each other with dice Ah. What? <laughs> and when you fight with the dice, you roll the dice, and the highest number you get is the highest number, and you that is the winner. Mm. Mm. Is that a mechanism in a Euro game? In a heavy, like a medium heavy Euro game? Isn't that kind of weird? So, so And it also has monsters which will go and attack you. You can attack each other. You can do that as a strategy. Mm. You can go for a heavy battle strategy. Like, that is pretty weird as... as as a, as a medium Euro game that we tend to like, so uh, so yeah, do we like that? Yeah, I am a little unsure because there's no blocking of action in this game, mm -hmm. and I like that in this uh, worker placement game that the actions you really want to do mm -hmm. is not blocked, but you have to fight after you've done that action. Which if is very important, the thing yeah, you said there. Yeah, after, after. After. So you get to do the actions mm -hmm. either way, but if you lose the battle afterwards, all of your dudes in the fight gets sent to the, the underworld. underworld. Ready to get that a sword. means when you reset uh -huh. and do these actions, mm -hmm. those guys can't do anything because yes. they're dead. Yeah. They're, dead, yeah. they're busy being dead. They're busy so being dead. so it can give you a setback if all of your guys get sent to the underworld uh -huh. and you don't get to do double worker placement, basically. Yeah, so you had a bigger issue with this than me. Yeah, I did. Which is kind of strange, because yeah. I usually don't like this kind of thing at mm -hmm. all. Uh, but, but somehow in this game, it's exciting. It is one of those games, because I don't feel, like in the games we have played, we're going to talk more about luck very soon, uh, because there is quite a bit of luck in this game, and we're going to see if, if we hate it like we usually do. Uh, the thing about the battles in this game is I don't feel they are super punishing. Mm. Like, if the battle's like, you lose the battle, lose all your resources. Mm. That wouldn't be, be horrible. Yeah. I feel like here, the fact, the first fact, which is like the, the biggest fact, is that you get to do the action first. Yes. So basically, if you block an action space, if this was a worker placement game, I just could do that action, which mm. could then destroy my strategy. Yes. So if you go to a worker placement space in like Agricola, mm. and I'm going to be like, oh yeah, then I'm not going to get done anything now, then this game, I can do that, but it's a risk. Yeah, I have a lot to say. Um, I I think Luke Glory has done a, a lot of things that makes uh, going into a battle or losing a battle mm. less punishing. Mm -hmm. uh, if I get two people sent to the underworld because I lost a battle, I get two swords in reward. So that can give me more dice in a battle uh, later. Yeah, because you can exchange these for yes. more dice. But if I... Because when I place a worker for the first time, I can mm -hmm. place anywhere yep. except where there is someone else uh -huh. because that would trigger a battle mm -hmm. uh, but then i can only move from that space yep. if you have some special abilities ignore that mm -hmm. but let's say i want to place here because mm -hmm. i want to go here later yeah if you then kill me i can't go there no but then you That's should a setback but then you should have gotten the dragon or the wizard yeah i'm just i'm just saying that. yeah but i'm just saying I, I, that I, I, that could set me back um, quite a, a lot. Yeah, I agree yes. with you. I agree with you, but there's lots of way to mitigate it. Like, for example, getting the wizard, getting the dragon. Yeah, because the wizard can teleport, place in any empty field, yeah. and the dragon can move basically a flight and can move two spaces and also into somewhere where there is somebody. But teleport, he has to be in an empty space. Yes. So if you're there already, yeah, that's then you can have work. the dragon. Yeah. But, so in the beginning but of the game. getting both the wizard no, no, and no, the no. dragon. But in the beginning, I, I, what I'm saying is, I understand yeah. you. But what I'm saying is that there is uh, 
there is ways to and mitigate I, it. I agree. And I also agree. then, if it was super important for you to go here, yeah. why start here? Because it's super important to me to go here as then well. Then you have to I decide. Have a plan. Then you have to decide. Yeah. It's it's. I I I would I would I would like I would fight you. I would not fight you, but I will <laughs> I will fight you in words that. It's not as different as in a normal worker no, placement. No, I agree. Game. Because if I, I go agree. here in a worker placement game, I really need to go there. Yes. What stops me from going there? In and you need two yeah, rounds before you need to that, go there. I agree that that is equally lucky to mm -hmm. hope that I don't lose that fight. To hope that I don't, uh, you don't go to uh, unblock mm -hmm. the space. I agree th about that. But in when I when I. Hmm. <laughs> when I go there, yeah. I know it's a risk that even it's a bold move, I can win this. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I haven't chosen yet actually, which y you know mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. feel like yeah. the same way no, of no. choosing. I, I agree. I agree. It doesn't feel like the way. Like my arguments, I'm I'm I feel like it's kind of balanced in that kind of like it's another type mm. of risk that he had made it, uh, and and makes this game stand out basically. It makes it yeah. different. It makes it very different from other worker placement game, but I will say, and I, I understand you, it feels different to go in, roll a die, and you were unlucky and you lost it. But if it was a normal worker placement game, you didn't even have a chance to go there. Yeah, like, so then basically, I'm, I, I'm fine with that before I roll the die. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I understand, because you don't like that element. And I, I, I most of the games, I wouldn't like this, but I, I love it. Like, I'm not like, it's not the thing of the game I love the most, mm -hmm. but I, I don't mind it because I feel like it's kind of the same thing. And also, there's many ways you can mitigate that luck because let's say there is a fight here now yeah and you have already built these dwellings which means you will get more dice in the battle ha -ha. and then you can also move this guy into the battle like in blood rage yeah. and you will have even more dice so now you would have four dice yeah and you can add two swords, swords and you have six dice which is the maximum and you can still lose but there's many ways to mitigate it and if there wasn't if it were just like roll one die and the highest win that would yeah. be a horrible mechanism but i feel like if you are open to playing a worker placement game which kind of have a different type of blocking, I, I think this is, and if you look at it like that, it's kind of like, let's talk about Blood Rage, it's kind of like the reason you didn't like Blood Rage is because you... The first you, time. Yeah, and, and you have, we have talked a bit but about this. But I won this. the first time, that it, is fun. It, but the yeah. thing is that you, you felt like your people died all the time. Yeah. And then I talked about like, but, but look at them like resources, like that it's resources that you spend mm -hmm. and you use them. And, and and then I don't feel like they're dying. Oh no, they die, and I had to put them out again. It's kind of a resource that I spend. And here I feel the same thing. I'm I'm in kind of in circles now. I feel like I said I want to say, this kind of the battles feel like another way of blocking, but you can mitigate. I agree. Um, and I, you might still not like it. And that's fine. But 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 I I like it because of that. I I think that he as far as meeting me mm -hmm. in the interaction and not being like uh, center of the underworld being mm -hmm. super punishing yep. i think that he is balanced as far as it has to go because if it was balanced even more it doesn't matter it yeah. gets to a point where it doesn't matter yeah, absolutely. now i actually care whether i stay on that spot or not mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that is important for the game to <laughs> yes, actually make absolutely. sense so um it's more of a me problem than a game problem and it's not a problem it's not a problem at all it's just like you you don't like that as much yes and i think one of the reasons like this is just me saying what i think you might feel about it yeah is that you you like to know yeah I like, like to you know. It's kind of like with, with chairs in games. You don't yeah. like that because you can't calculate exactly yes. how much it's worth. Yep. So here you, you don't, like in a worker placement game, if I go there, you know, okay, you can't go there. Yeah. And then you have to plan something else. But here you feel like you might but be able I to can, go there. But I can, maybe. If I just like... Is that true? Is that yeah. kind of like my... If I just use like one more dude, maybe I can win. And mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you get like a six on the die and I'm five dice and I get just like Once. rubbish. Yeah. But is that, is that like... It's kind of the way I feel. Yeah. Another reason why I don't mind it, because like when you win a fight, you go up in the glory. And if that was like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points, that would... Another thing that would make it mm -hmm. horrible. I don't feel like this is super duper awesome like it is some some um, bonus resources but it's not something that gives you like oh now you win because you go for battles yeah I, I i had one time where i did not have fun at all in this game mm -hmm. and that is mostly my fault probably mm -hmm. but all of my I, I lost every battle in the beginning mm -hmm. where you're supposed to build yourself a little bit up and all my guys got sent here and i basically didn't get to do any of these actions yeah 
which which made then because here you can basically do three worker placement actions in one actions uh -huh, that yeah. could be if you plan it out correctly very powerful yes that meant that it lost me a lot of early dwellings mm -hmm. that also uh, didn't help me win a lot of battles and points for the long game so yeah. i'm a little hurt by that i think but i i and I, I, I agree i there, there is possible to be very unlucky mm. but because you roll so many times yeah, because you do that so many times it's unusual that mm. somebody is so yes. unlucky I, do you feel like you have the same kind of uh, approach to this as I have to Terraforming Mars? Mm, yeah, kind of. Where yeah. there is like, I can love Terraforming Mars and I can hate it because I get unlucky. Yes, yeah, because that is, I'm now like traveling a little into final thoughts here. Yeah, I have a couple of more things I want yeah, to talk about. Yeah, do you want to do that first? With luck, because yes. like, there's a couple more things with luck in the yeah. game. Uh, and those are these cards. Yeah. And these cards. Yes. You can end up like uh, because somebody draws a card or buys a card, and there's this perfect card for you, and you can grab that, and that will give you lots of points. And also, you can have lucky or unlucky with these cards. Some of them are, are end of game scoring, which you can go for. Like if you have five of those, that's going to be a lot of points that other people can't get, mm. and that's just basically luck if you get to draw them or not. If you draw a lot of these cards in the beginning and get a lot of end of game scoring, mm. then you can basically work towards that. But none of that is actually bothering me. And that's something that's strange because I have so much fun playing this game that the luck elements that I usually hate more than you yeah. hate and I pick on in games, I don't mind them here. And I feel like I have gotten, uh, like, this is just like drawing cards. Nah, it's, yeah, it's the This thing. is also a resource. If yes. you need them for drawing more cards, yeah. like this chess symbol, or getting more of these plain workers, you can use your cards totally that you cards. don't need. Oh, that is a very good mm. thing. But I feel like I've given a lot of arguments about why I don't feel like this is just luck based and why yeah. I feel like it is. Uh, so so I, I can still say that I don't like luck in games and I like <laughs> this. So yeah, should we do some final thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I can start. Mm -hmm. I feel like when i'm going into this game because mm -hmm. i my brain is the way it is mm -hmm. i need to be just a little open-minded to being unlucky and being fine with that mm -hmm. i have to realize that in some games of this game i might not have that much much fun because i lose in games like these little battles and you don't like i'm losing. a sore loser yeah that is like the plain the truth of it mm, so this might not be the perfect game for me mm -hmm. personally, yep. but I actually really think he has done some really nice things with trying to make a Euro game with a lot of interaction, doing a little twist and turns that makes this stand out and makes this unique. But for me, this is a seven, so yeah, a, cool. a little over average game. Absolutely, uh, I, I, I love this game. I feel like Luke Laurie has managed to make a fresh, a different feeling work replacement game. Mm. I feel like the there is luck here. So if you hate luck, I do. I hate luck, but I love this game. And I, I don't I, I felt like I have explained why now, so I can say I yes. don't know why. I feel like I know why. I love that it's different. I love that it takes some elements that I don't get in a lot of games, like rolling dice, fighting monsters, and puts it into your game without making it feel less Euro game. Uh, it might not be a perfect information game where you can plan everything out at the, at the start, but I don't always want that. And this makes me build up a fun strategy that has a lot of cool interaction, a lot of blocking. Oh, you took that dwelling before me. Oh, you go to that space. Do I really want to go in and fight you because you have the dwellings or you have a warrior standing here that can jump in and, and, and kill me? And there's just so many things to, 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 to think about. And, and, and also this is an engine building, so you're trying to be good at some of these different elements and get into specific cards and get those before the other players take them. There's just so many things to like here. And then you add the great components, you add the game trace, the production, you add all of that, which makes it a stellar game for me. So I'm gonna give it an 8.5. Oh, I nice. think it's a very good game, one of the better games I've played this year. And um, so yeah, if anything of that sounded like you would like it, or if you're more of a sore loser and don't like games, then you might not like it. Uh, but I think that is the end of this video. Yes. So thank you so much for watching. If you're still here and you haven't subscribed, please do it now. It makes yeah. us happy. And that is the end. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Senua. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye-bye.